everybody, Rob Anderson, Clean Power Wash, Salisbury, Maryland. Um, heading back to Hebron, where I actually do live now. But Salisbury, Maryland is just what I keep saying anyways. But, um, so yeah, I had a question about, you know, how did you handle, um, you know, finding employees, training employees, dealing with customers with them while you're still working a full-time job. And I know this is kind of a different route most people you know work their full-time day job and want to earn some side time, side money um, so they start hustling on weekends and evenings and whatnot washing houses and stuff um, and eventually get to the point where they um, you know decide to make that leap because they're so busy they can't do both jobs and then eventually get busy again enough to the point that they want to help her and then get more employees yada yada um, what I did differently and I think you know it, it may make things a little bit more difficult, um, but it requires you to go ahead and start managing people. Um, so that the nice thing, like for me, when I finally made that jump in, in November, um, I already had three guys working for me. I already had substantial enough work to keep them busy and provide enough additional income to pretty well support me, and I wasn't washing anything. Um, which is really where you want to be to that point, you know, to truly own a business and not just, um, you know, be self-employed. And there is a very big difference between owning a business and being self-employed or being a business owner. Um, you know, you can parse words, but there is a, a definitely a big difference there. Um, so, I mean, as far as finding people, I've mentioned in the past, finding people that are underemployed, not unemployed, but underemployed, is going to be your best thing early on. Because this is somebody like yourself that is hungry for more money. They have the time available. They also have other income coming in from somewhere else. So, if you know, you got that guy who's working four days a week at whatever job and he wants to work another two more days a week to make more money, provide for himself or his family or whatever, it's a good situation. Um, I never had non-compete agreements with the guys early on. I do now. I uh, probably should have a long time ago. And you can get a basic non-compete. Um, but I also think that you know the way that you treat your employees is going to dictate a lot about whether or not that person, you know, people are always worried, oh, if they're a good employee, they'll, you know, they're going to become your competition quickly. Um, there is some truth to that, but again, if you, if you treat them properly and you pay them well and you help them to see and understand the full econ economics of running your business, that it's not just you paid them $50 on a $100 or, you know, on a $300 job. Um, and you pocket it 250. It, it doesn't work like that. It'd be nice, but uh, it's more involved. So again, finding underemployed people, um, whether you're finding them through Craigslist or Indeed or Facebook or whatever, I, I personally like to dip into my own personal connections pool. Um, you know, putting out, hey, I need, I'm looking for a helper. Um, this isn't just you know the the single day stuff, but this is more. Hey guys, um, I'm, I'm looking for somebody who's interested in working hard, wants to work a couple days a week. We got flexible schedules, stuff like that. Because uh, back then, you know, I could schedule it if we were going to be, uh, you know, if we had time on, you know, Tuesday to do work, we would schedule it for Tuesday. Um, if we didn't have any time available Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, then we just didn't schedule work then. You know, the customer doesn't know when you say my next available appointment's Tuesday. The, you know, and, and it doesn't matter why you're not available until then. I'm gonna put this back up. That sun's a little too bright. Um, as far as handling payments and charging customers and stuff, um, again, this goes back to being comfortable with that person. If you're afraid they're going to steal the money, um, don't hire them. Um, if you can't trust them to take the payment from the customer, don't hire them. Uh, I honestly have a bigger issue with my guys not looking for the payment and then us chasing money and me having to go make a separate trip to go pick up a check from somebody. Um, 
and I, I hate having to do that. I, I'd much rather have the money available and, you know, go ahead and just deposit the checks. Um, you know, some of you might want to just go all credit cards if that's simpler for you, or, or cash, or whatever. Um, you know, you need to have a process in place. You know, do they, leave, you know, lock up the vehicle and... You know, if you've got multiple vehicles, I had a you know, Dodge Ram that I left for them to use, and I had my other personal vehicle that I would take to work. You know, do they do they lock the money in the car? Do they put it in the office? Do they, um, you know, do they put it in the mailbox, or is there a special spot to hide it whenever they get back with it? You know, how do you track that? Those are the kind of things that you have to have a defined and explained process for. You, know, you don't have to have some major system, but like, hey, uh, put the money here on the desk with a sticky note that says who it was from. Um, right now, I've, I've shown you guys where we have our checks, uh, our receipts, and keys, where the guys can do that. And then any cash is uh, either given directly to me or to my wife. Um, you know, you need to make sure, certainly with your insurance, that they're added on as a authorized driver uh, otherwise that could be a big issue and usually isn't going to change your premium much if at all um, so I mean that that's the kind of stuff again guys you, you got to be willing to surrender a little bit of that control and it, it is going to force you to stay on top of them make sure that they are doing what they need to do I just got home got to check the mail So, I mean, that, that's kind of how I, I feel, especially with getting employees early on. Um, it also helps you work on systems and, and levels of, um, you know, what is our level of clean? What is our standards? What is acceptable? What's not? It forces you to do a better job, too, of staying in contact with your customers, even though you're not out there. So, I hope that helps, guys. Have a great day.